Thomas, what does the uh, future of travel payments look like? So I think it's going to look a lot nice and richer for the traveler itself. Uh, today, when you think about the trip, the traveler has to book different parts of his whole journey from different providers. And I see a future where one provider, one travel provider, will be almost like a personal concierge who looks after you throughout the whole journey, which uh, will, for OTAs and airlines and whoever is in the travel space, uh, will provide the opportunity to sell along the entire trip. Now what that means for payment providers and for the payment uh, ecosystem that needs to support that is you need to be able to take multiple payments in a really, really seamless, easy way. Uh, think about the, the Uber example where you get into a taxi and you get out and it's, it's paid. And I believe uh, the younger generation or actually anybody traveling will want that same type of experience throughout the journey for all the extra ancillary Absolutely. And how does WorldPay payment solutions facili facilitate this future? There's two angles of it. So first of all, you need to create that seamless payment experience. So it's, it's about optimizing the first part of, of, the, of the journey when, when the initial purchase happens. So you need to make that very easy and, and you make your, your traveler very safe. He feels, he feels safe and comfortable to share his payment details. Then the next crucial part is to store those payment details in a safe environment for any subsequent transaction. So that any other transaction, so think about the land somewhere and get a notification on your, on your watch saying, look, we've got a limo prepared for you that takes you to your hotel. Would you like that? And all you need to do is swipe or press the finger on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the button and that confirms the payment. And the payment happens seamlessly at the background. So as a payment provider, the payment ecosystem needs to enable you to store those details and then be able to reuse them for any subsequent transaction. With that merchant? With that with, with that merchant or, or potentially with, with partners. Of course, that becomes a bit more difficult and complex. So the preferred approach really is for that entity to become the merchant record for the entire uh, ancillary service chain. So for all the bits and pieces throughout the journey, the ground transportation, the entrance to museums, the spa treatment at the hotel, taxis to get you around, all these extra bits that you do need and traditionally buy in cash because you need to go to the ATM and that means cash is the only way to get all those. Ideally you have all that in your hands and, and being able to use the payment methods that, that you've always used from, from home and known from home. I believe most of the major OTAs today and a, a lot of the airlines will offer you uh, travel services beyond what they sell through partners yes. after your booking yes. is complete. Yes. So for those people, those are the likely first adopters yes. to be able to provide the seamless Yes, payment. yes. But what they do do today in most cases is they refer to a third party. And as a traveler, once you refer to a third party, you have to re-enter all the payment details. So you basically have to enter your name again, have to find your credit card number, pick out your credit card number and, and pay with that credit card and it becomes a separate transaction. Now that's a broken user experience and uh, in particular if you think about changes of itineraries, you decide to stay a day longer, which means you have to change the pickup at the airport when you, when you come back home. Now, if you did individual transactions, you have to go back to every single provider yeah. and kind of try to fix that. If your travel concierge, concierge the merchant of record for the end-to-end -end, um, experience, for the end-to-end -end chain, including the payment details, they are able to reverse the transaction or edit, modify the transaction and, and be that central point. They can do a reversal or a refund and, and take an incremental payment for the uh, potentially the cost of changing the ticket. But as a central provider, kind of this concept of a super PNR that's been around forever, as a central provider, you're in charge of the PNR and you need to be in charge of the payment of all the elements so you can actually manage the PNR if there have been changes or, or additions to the PNR. Give us a little background about WorldPay, please. So WorldPay is a global acquirer. That's the number one thing we do is acquire. We have licenses in many, many regions and, and countries around the world. For people who don't know what an acquirer is? So if you look at the payment transactions, basically the simplest way to describe it is we do everything that needs to happen from the moment you enter payment details. We capture them, we process them safely, we fraud check them to make sure that only good transactions come through kind of the front end piece and then behind the scenes what we do is we, we optimize the path that this transaction flows to 
get the best acceptance rates, to be most likely to be authorized, um, while keeping the costs for the merchant the lowest. So we have an intelligent routing mechanism that determines what country that transaction is going to, the way it's flagged, or, or the, the attributes that are coming along with the transaction, to be able to get as many transactions approved as possible for that merchant. That's the main Let's take focus. the main part. And then, and then there's the ancillary bits around it. Of course, you have fraud. Uh, if you're a marketplace, you have the, the payout. So if you need to pay all your suppliers or, or a, 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 an Airbnb type of business, who needs to pay all the hosts, we, so we can provide that component. Then there's all the reconciliation, so you need to get all the reports in, you need to reconcile it with your sales, so that's the, the reporting reconciliation piece. And then don't forget about the, when things go wrong, chargebacks. So you need to be able to pull in the, the chargebacks that are coming in, you need to be able, you need to, be able to defend those and you need to work with processes around that. And um, especially the alternative payment method is another angle that is quite relevant for, for service providers as they don't just want to offer credit cards in certain markets because they're not necessarily the primary way, primary way for people to pay. But you need to be a bit more clever about what other payment methods you offer uh, in, in particular markets. Because many different countries around the world have their local regional yes. credit card payment yes. uh, system. Absolutely. I read something on your website that it says WorldPay enables sales distribution across multiple multi-channels for airlines, hotels and attractions. Mm. Could you clarify? Mm. So airlines have two traditional channels. It's the direct channel and uh, for them it's kind of the website. Of course there's the, the, the city ticket offices and that kind of legacy stuff. And then the, the online, the, the, the travel agency channel. But the direct channel is now diversifying to a really, really complex matrix. So you have not only e-commerce, you have the whole mobile aspects. You get into in-airport payments. So we're working on a, on a, on a project with, uh, with, uh, with um, Amadeus to enable payments at check-in desks which will enable an airline to sell uh, baggage, seat assignment, um, upgrades, destination service at the check-in counter. They don't have to send you off anymore to the ticket desk where traditionally it was the only place you could take a payment as the airline at the airport. So it's airlines is in in-flight um, sales, so Wi-Fi now enables uh, real-time authorization, so you can start to sell high-value transactions, um, a watch or even inventory-based things like theater shows, you just um, see that seat is still available and then, and then you sell it. Um, so it, it's covering many channels with, with one provider, basically, that's what we can have on the omni-channel experience, really. we, we cover all the channels and we align the payments between the channels, so you, need, you, can, you can buy a ticket online, you can go back to the service desk, the service desk will be able to find the transaction and refund them. So it's not only being able to take payments in many channels, but it's about that, that cross-channel um, information, information sharing that enables that really smooth travel experience. Thank you very much, Thomas.